Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Morning Passage. It's a 5 by 7 it's a redo, and what you're looking at now would have been my drawing stage from back in 2013. In 2013 I wasn't doing video yet. Um, but I was into doing photography, especially my drawing stage, so I stopped doing that uh, when I started videotaping since I had video of the drawing portion, but I've always found it, uh, actually for a long time I used to like take photos with my little uh, Sony digital uh, camera, you know, of my progress, but uh, you know, the camera technology came around, the computers got bigger and better, and um, so I videotape, been videotaping since late 2014. So uh, I got some, you can see this was a been my first revision here that was done in 2015. And I did like what I did. I felt that it was um, definitely improved. Um, but still, I felt the colors were kind of blah. I didn't maybe feel that when I revised it, but when I was digging around for some more redos to look at in uh, last year, 2018, I grabbed it and I put it in my pile of maybe 40 little paintings that I was going to redo or revise in some way. And uh, I was talking in yesterday's video about doing some extreme glazing and so I thought this would be a really good example of that because I'm getting ready to hit this nice little painting that didn't hurt nobody with some dioxine purple in a big, big way. And there you go and you might go oh my god what's he doing <laughs> I'm just taking it for a ride I figure I got nothing to lose I want to make this painting more interesting it's not a bad composition it's sort of an interesting composition but um, it needed something and so I thought well I, ha I was having a lot of fun and 2018 uh, was about the first year I was sort of doing extreme glazing and uh, just on a lark, it just popped into my head one day that I could do it. And um, a lot of times I might do uh, like a purple on the top, into a red, into an orange, into a yellow. I did that on a little one I've gotten, uh, I've kind of been putzing around with in the studio um, lately. Um, but what I like about this is that you kind of set up some problems for yourself that will trigger your imagination and that you kind of get a little bit lost and you need to you need to get, uh, find a way to make the painting look good. Um, I would do this quite often with like phthalo blue as well. I've done it with perlene red which is a really bright cadmium type red except unlike cadmium it's transparent. Um, and I waited yet another moment. Oh, sorry I thought I heard someone driving up to drive there. Uh, yellows. Um, my hands are yellow uh, medium. I will glaze with it but it's it's semi-transparent only it's, and so that'll knock your um, your darks back but you can always restate the darks. In fact you end up restating almost everything in the painting. The initial glaze uh, you know on one hand you kind of want to keep it because everything's lovely and transparent but what you end up with is kind of this hybrid painting that has transparent stained passages interacting with the opaque strokes over the top and of course the original painting underneath so I get uh, results with these sorts of uh, redos that are totally unlike anything I would do just fresh now I have done purple tone paintings um, just out of the gate and uh, uh, and I, I, you know, I can do almost any kind of color painting I want to do, but this is a bit of a different thing because when I put it in the pile to redo it, it's not like I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to redo this six months from now when we're just going to rub some purple on it. I very much just throw myself um, in the hands of the universe and just hope that things will work out well. And I have to say, usually they do, and when they don't, it's still not a big deal because it's not over till it's over. It's not over till I give up. So a lot of times, uh, maybe I, I, I've been lost. I, I'm trying to get found. I struggle. 
I don't quite get there. I put it in the drying area, hit it with another coat of liquid, and then just keep going, you know, wait for inspiration. And uh, again, this is uh, different for me because I'm a planner. Most of my paintings I do, I've got a very strong plan and um, I carry it out, I follow through. And uh, they, they end up looking very much like what I intended uh, them to look like when, um, from actually even when I was standing in nature looking at the original scene and, uh, you know, recording it with a photograph. Um, I actually do a lot of maneuvering with my camera just to get things as best as I can. Um, in the old days, it would have been out there sketching, you know. Um, but the camera is much faster and now there's a bunch of traps inherent using photography which if you've been with me for any time at all you've heard me talk about it extensively so I'll save you I'll save you that whole lecture but suffice to say one of the the biggest problems with using photographic reference is that it often precludes you from using your imagination and in, in, in one of the big reasons to have paintings instead of just really awesome photos, of which there are no shortage, um, is the human imagination that brings in the uh, that brings in a lot of the in, in my case it's a lot of like a dreamlike quality, and, I, and uh, I just love the effects I get with the redos. I have quite a few on the wall in my studio gallery right now and I sold one just the other day and um, I pointed out to the uh, person that bought it that I had revised that particular painting five five times which is a record this one here just got revised twice so that's a bit more common you know or just one revision heck you know but uh, if uh, it's funny because um, I'll just keep working at it until I get something cool you know but I don't do what I do not do is try and pull that off like uh, consecutively like just keep working on a painting until you hope it turns out cool because that almost never works yeah it doesn't what what that creates is strain and what you don't want in your in your paintings is any kind of strain you want things to feel relaxed and sort of effortless so a lot of times time and distance and you don't care so much because you've done a hundred something paintings since the last time you looked at this thing that you just found in the box and you're just you're inclined to be quite objective you're going oh, okay I can I can do something like that I can think about it I got I got a plan but uh, and I do I have a plan uh, of certain strategies I will use on revisions uh, one is extreme glazing one is subtle glazing one is um, dramatically altering the composition or perhaps changing a road into a river or or just painting something entirely different at the bottom of the painting and leaving the top alone or repainting the entire sky uh, these are all things I've done and uh, what's great about it is it's just fun I mean it's a lot more fun um, in many ways than sitting down to do an original uh, painting on one hand on the other hand um, I prefer to uh, if I had my preference I wouldn't need to do redos because everything I do would just be great right out of the gate but that isn't the way life works I don't think it's the way life works for anyone I do I can say that as I've been painting about 10 years now um, it gets easier as you go um, I, this era that uh, this painting began its life in 2013 was a, it was a period of, of bitter struggle and hardship and um, fortunately for me I didn't I have a pretty healthy ego so I didn't really even notice how many mediocre paintings I was making <laughs> I was just plugging along you know and I don't think that's a bad thing I think it's good to plug along and uh, it, it created um, fodder grist for the mill so to speak things that could improve later and uh, I do think I prove this now the reason this video is in existence is uh, because I'm putting this painting up in my store so we're getting to the marketing portion of this video by the way speaking of that if you haven't clicked like would you please I would really appreciate that 
I would. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Come on, man. We got some great content here. We're doing paintings. And uh, this week, going to be quite a few videos out. So there you go. But it's in the store. It's going to be priced reasonably. Shipping will be included. Um, heck, if you're nice, I might even throw in a frame. If you say, oh, I saw this on YouTube, I'll definitely throw in a frame for you. Um, and I do the shipping included thing because I live out in New Zealand, so I don't want anyone to have to hassle with that. That's all built in, but um, it will be priced reasonably. I've decided that uh, um, I've got a, you know, a pretty good uh, store of little paintings, and so I want to get them in people's homes and just keep rolling on down the line. And uh, there you go. So expect to see some more videos like this because the other thing is I like to have a video on the page with the painting in my store. I just think it looks cool. I think it's engaging. I've always loved to know how a painting was created and uh, uh, so um, everyone's benefiting like I mentioned in the last video like this. So anyway, thank you for joining me today. I'll be back real soon with another video and uh, Hopefully you enjoyed watching this one and uh, the extreme glazing demonstration. Um, well, like I said, back real soon with another video. Meanwhile, please take good care of yourself and your family, your loved ones, your friends. Heck, take good care of your boss. Take good care of everybody. And uh, until I see you again, stay out of trouble.